This is my backyard wind turbine. It's made with an Amatec 38 volt DC motor. Some blades made out of 4 inch Schedule 40 PVC pipe. Excuse me, 6 inch Schedule 40. It's got a 4 inch Schedule 40 uh, shroud covering the motor and a, uh, a tail and mount that I bought from uh, a guy on eBay. You can see that uh, this is uh, mounted using a inch and a quarter thick walled plumbing pipe. I guide the wires off about five feet down from, uh, from where the wind turbine sits with three guy wires. Coming down, you can see my base over here. I'll walk up and show it to you. <clears throat> Not quite done with the electrical work. Here's what we've got so far. We've got inch and a half pipe with inch and a half elbows down there to an inch and a half T that serves as my pivot so I can lay the tower down and stand it back up and then I go to a reducer and then up to the inch and a quarter pipe. I've got my grounding spike over here. That's eight feet of inch and a half copper coated steel it's down into the ground. I've got two grounding points. First, that Amatec motor has a a ground wire that comes down. So I've got that connected right in there and it goes down to this grounding bracket that bra that connects to the tower. So I've got the tower and the motor both grounded and then they come out over here to the grounding spike. <coughs> this was instrumental. This is just a notched two before, uh, eight foot section. It was instrumental in helping push the tower up because that pipe isn't quite thick enough to lift the whole thing on its own, at least not with any level of confidence. Up there you can see where I mounted it to the eave and just over to the left of that you can see a little eye bolt. That's right into the eave and that's where we connected a pulley. That pulley connected up to the top section of a pipe of tower uh, with a couple knots so that we could pull it up. That wire, or that rope rather, then we ran down over here. This is my garden that's been overgrown this summer while I worked on the wind turbine. That's the other eye bolt. That's our, our safety. And that goes into a 4x4 that's uh, cemented into the ground there. We ran the uh, the wire or the rope down through that so that uh, we could have a little bit extra force just in case that uh, tower decided to get away from us. One nice thing about raising uh, towers in the, in the still days is you don't have to worry about any wind picking up and pulling on your turbine bad news is once you get it up all your neighbors wonder what you did because it's not spinning at all so uh, there's a uh, a law similar to Murphy's law with wind turbines that says that uh, you won't have any wind for at least a week or two after you raise your wind turbine up so so far that's proven to be true bring you over here this is my backyard this it looks like a regular tetherball pole about 10 feet tall just with a very thick uh, cemented tire at the base. This is what I used as my prototyping pole. Uh, I went through two revisions of uh, the wind turbine design, one using a, uh, a DC treadmill motor from a treadmill that didn't work anymore. We harvested that and built a prototype and put it out here on top of this pole and uh, that way we could watch it spin and uh, measure the power output from it. It turns out the uh, power output from that was not very good at all. Regardless how fast it went, we didn't get any more than two volts out of it. Uh, so we were able to determine that the reason the treadmill broke was because the motor went out. So I ordered this Amatec. They don't make them anymore from what I understand, but uh, I ordered the Amatec from uh, a seller on eBay. It's just about the only place you can get them anymore. Uh, tested it out and just spinning it with my fingers I was able to get uh, 18 to 20 volts out of it. So. That should do pretty good once the wind starts blowing out here. I started out with a six-bladed design uh, on this Amatec, and it spun pretty well, but it was relatively slow. You can see that in my previous video. Uh, a 
slow isn't a bad thing. Uh, when you've got low winds, that means that the uh, the turbine is going to it's going to spin up in slower wind speeds. But uh, it, it also gives it quite a bit more torque when you've got those extra uh, those extra blades on it. The bad news is it doesn't uh, it doesn't spin all that fast. So once the wind does get going you're losing out on a lot of that high RPM energy because you get a lot more energy out of it the faster it goes. So I sacrificed three of the blades. Uh, we'll go with just the traditional three blade design and see how that goes. And uh, hopefully that'll be great. Over here on the high part of my roof, uh, I plan on putting a, uh, a Lens 2 turbine sometime in the future. That'll probably be my, uh, my project over the winter. We'll see how that goes. Uh, as far as city ordinances go, uh, I can place a structure no higher than seven feet above the highest point of my roof line. So if you go straight over from the top of that wind turbine over to the top of that roof, that's almost exactly seven feet. So I'm getting up as high as I can go without going through a, uh, a conditional use permit process. Um, now all we need to do is come back down to the bottom and finish up my, my hard wiring. Right now, if you uh, saw that, I got it kind of capped off. So the plus and minus, positive and negative, coming down from that Amatec are both wire nutted together right here. And that serves as a, a break. You should always do that when you're raising your, your turbine off the ground. It puts a, an artificial load on the turbine so it doesn't spin out of control once you get it up into the wind, if there is wind that day. So we went ahead and did that, and I've just left it that way. I could probably open that up and see if it would spin a little bit more freely, but uh, I don't know. We'll see if uh, we want to do that later. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to contact me over at uh, joelevi.com. Thanks.